Hey everyone, in this video I want to share with you some tips for shooting long exposures and show you the role that shutter speed plays in landscape photography. Some of the raw files that we shoot today you can also download via the link below. Alright, let's get into it. So the first question to answer really is what is a long exposure? There's no real definitive answer here. It's all in relation to the shutter speed. Now how slow is slow enough to be classified as a long exposure? It's all subjective really. For me, I typically think of an exposure that's say longer than one second as being a long exposure. Anything that's a bit faster than one second, let's say half a second, quarter of a second, I kind of just call those slow shutters or, or semi-slow shutters. But anything longer than a second is what I'm going to classify as a long exposure itself. So when we're shooting long exposures, what's happening is the shutter in our camera, it's opening up and we're allowing more time for light to go through the lens and hit the sensor. The results will always vary depending on several factors. First and foremost, it's the light, the ambient light that you have available. If you have a lot of light, a bright scene, then you're not going to be able to expose as long without using something like a neutral density filter, which we'll talk about later. It's basically sunglasses for your camera. The other factor is, what are you doing the long exposure on? If you're doing it on a static subject, let's say it's a forest, a dark forest, you could do a 30 second exposure and there's gonna be no difference to that frame compared to if you did a faster exposure on a brighter day. However, when you do a long exposure on something moving, whether it's a car, a person, or in our case here today, a river, then we're gonna get a vastly different result on our subject. And that's what we're gonna look at now. So when do we shoot long exposures? When are they needed? Typically, a long exposure is needed or required when there's not much light for you to capture. And therefore, you need a slower shutter speed in order to get a bright enough exposure. Another time that it could be used is if you purposely want to get a certain effect on your subject matter, and you're going to do something like either close the f-stop down or put on a filter in order to get that result. So there's two ways really. It's needed when there's a lack of light and the only way to get the exposure bright enough is to do a long exposure or it can be used as a tool to get an artistic result. And subjects that you might want to consider would be a river, the beach, down a lake. Maybe it's the way the wind is sweeping across some tussock or ferns. Maybe it's cars moving through in the city and you can experiment and get different results. And actually really fun to do. And I know when I first started on my photography journey, capturing long exposures was just something that I enjoyed so much. And it's always surprising to, to see what the result's gonna be like because it's always different to the way the eye views the world and the environment that you're in. When it comes to shooting long exposures, I definitely suggest using a tripod when you're starting out especially. There are little hacks you can do to get around that, which I cover in other videos. Personally, I don't really use a tripod much anymore, but mainly I'm shooting slow shutters and not going much longer than one second. So definitely you wanna have a tripod and a camera that you can shoot in manual mode. So you're able to take that full control of the shutter speed to get the results that you're after. So why don't we set up now and we'll do a few example shots and we'll look at the different results we can get with different shutter speeds. So I'm down by the Holyford River today. It's one of my favorite rivers in NZ. And let's look at creating a nice image of the river, doing a long exposure on the water. One of the first considerations is the ambient light available. As you can see, this is all in the shade at the moment, and that's really gonna help. It's gonna allow me to slow the shutter down and blur that water without overexposing the scene. So that's the first thing. If this was harsh sunlight, it would be very tricky and we'd have to go get a filter out or something like that to darken down the scene. The other consideration is now is trying to pre-envision firstly the framing and composition, but what's going to happen when I do shoot that long exposure? I'm standing downstream, the river's moving towards me. When I frame this up, I'm facing this direction. So I'm gonna make sure that the river, it's gonna be flowing from left to right through my frame. So when it comes to a river or a beach, it's the white cascades in a long exposure which do all the magic. You can see there's portions of the river here where there's not much cascade action at all. When I do a slow shutter there, long exposure, we're not really gonna see much difference, nothing too special. It'll just smooth it out a little bit. When I incorporate the white rushing cascades, that's where the texture comes in and we're gonna get a nice result. So I'm gonna try and frame this up so we've got the flow of the river really being emphasized through the long exposure. So I'll look at a composition here and then we'll talk about the settings and look at some different results. 
So I found a frame here where I've got a large rock up the top, I've got another one down the lower portion and then the white water rushing all the way through and now I need to start considering the settings. You know, I've got the framing there, which we can always tweak and adjust, which I will now briefly. When it comes to the settings, we don't want to dwell on that too much. I want to more talk about the actual shutter speed and the long exposure result, but basically I want a low ISO. It's going to keep the noise down, so I've got it locked in at ISO 100. The depth of field, I do actually have quite a bit of depth here because of the angle I'm on, and I've got something near as well as something far. There's quite a bit of depth, so I'm going to throw it on F16 to begin with. Now that I've done that, it's time to play with the shutter. Because it's all in the shade here, when I look at my histogram, I've got a bit of room to, to move, you know. I'm slowing the shutter down now and I'm monitoring my histogram live. And this is the key point. Utilize the histogram and use that as a guideline to know how long you can go with your exposure. I could take an image at one tenth of a second, which I'll do now, and we'll check the result. Now I'm gonna do one at one six. And as I'm slowing the shutter down and doing a longer and longer exposure, I'm watching the histogram slowly get brighter, but I'm also checking the result that I'm getting on the water. This is what it's all about. Which speed do I like? Which is the texture that I like? What is the most pleasing to the eye? Am I trying to get a very calm, serene image? Am I trying to show the force of the river? The shutter speed is gonna determine that, the long exposure. So I've done one at half a second, I'm going to do a one second exposure now. You can see the differences here on these images as we pull them up, how different it looks. Now I'm at one second, the histogram is getting quite bright. This is where again, if you had an ND filter on, you could chuck that on and you could go even longer. In this case, if you're like me and you're lazy and you don't carry around filters, you could simply close down the f-stop. I'm at f16 and I'm able to get one second. If I close the f-stop down to say f22, yes, the image will be a little bit softer. The optics on the lens is not as great when it's closed right down, but it's nothing really to worry about in my opinion, um, especially if you've got a decent lens. Now I'm at F22, I'm able to get an exposure 1.6 seconds. So you'll see the result now at 1.6 and how different that is. And I'll do one more at two seconds and there's the result there. If I wanted to go faster, then I could go back to say F11, it's still gonna give me my depth of field, and then at F11, we're able to you know, get something around a 15th this time. This is what it's all about for me. Long exposures is experimentation. Utilizing the movement in your subject matter in conjunction with your shutter speed and then finding that result that you actually like. So you can see these exposures, they're long, but they're not that long. So why don't we leave the river now? Let's head down the lake after sunset and we'll do some 10, 20 second exposures in the blue hour and you can see the result on the static water in the lake. Okay, it's uh, sunset and we're just down the lake now, Lake Tiania. This is the local just around the corner from home. And we've got a good combination here, guys. We've got some beautiful cloud there, which is catching a little bit of the light. And the cloud's great because when we do a long exposure, we can get some interesting textures going on up there with the water itself on the lake. It's actually relatively smooth and not necessarily warranting a long exposure. However, there is the odd ripple here and there and the beauty of the long exposure is it's just gonna slick it right out, smooth it out and give it a completely different look. We, we're pretty much on sunset now and it's not that dark yet. So if I wanted to do a long exposure longer than two seconds, for example, it's really too bright. So the way to get around that is using a neutral density filter. So let's talk about those. All right, so I've, I've dug deep into the bag and I still do have a few filters in there kicking around. This is a neutral density filter and it's a screw on, which means it, it screws on to the front of the lens there. There's another system where you screw on a filter holder and then the filters themselves are rectangular or square. Um, so anyway, what essentially they are, it's like sunglasses for your lens. It's gonna dim down the amount of light coming into the camera. It's gonna trick it to think it's darker, basically. The ND filters come in different opacities, so different darkness levels, and they're measured in stops. So you could have a three stop, six stop, 10 stop, etc. The more stops of light that it's going to cut out, the longer exposure time you will need. So at the moment here, these are not too dark. I think I've got a three stop here. So we might put that on, and then we'll see what type of exposure we can get. So at the moment, I'm at ISO 100, F16, 
and it's telling me my exposure needs to be about 20th of a second. So let's see if we can slow that down a little bit more and then of course we'll wait for that sun to drop as well. So we'll chuck on our filter here and as you can see, just screws on and instantly that has told my histogram now that I'm going to need a longer exposure. All right, so looking at a histogram here, we're at F16, 25th of a second, very dark exposure. Now we've got that ND on. I'll start to slow down that shutter until we get brighter. So we're sitting on about one second now. We're starting to blow those highlights out. The other thing I could do, of course, is close down the f-stop as I spoke about earlier on, F20. That's pretty much the correct exposure there. What I'm going to do is try and screw on the second filter. So you can see as I bring that in, so now we're stacking two of these on top of each other and that's going to darken things down yet again. So let's see how long we get now. We can probably pull off three seconds here, even four seconds. So let's try a four second exposure. Left it at F20 for the moment. And let's see how this comes out. Okay, so we've done our four second exposure and as you can see, I think the result, you know, it's quite nice. Um, it's not a long enough exposure to really streak those clouds or anything. That's where you're gonna have to be 10 seconds and beyond. What we could do, I wanna show you a little trick here. This is a little hack that uh, I learned years ago. Um, and it's something I've always kept in mind when you're doing, if you ever do a long exposure. If I wanna slow down the shutter more, let's say we go down to about Oh, let's go for 10 seconds. Now, 10 seconds, when I look at my histogram in the lower portion, it's probably gonna be fine. It's just the sky which is going to overexpose and I can see the histograms telling me that in the live view before I even shoot. What I'm going to do during that 10 second exposure is bring my hand down in front of the lens and partially, basically block the sky. So it's like dodging and burning. So I'm burning mid exposure and I'm not allowing that portion that bright area to come through the lens for a certain amount of time so let's see how the result comes out I'm just doing an exposure now without putting the hand in front of the lens and you're going to see the result here you can see there that the sky is completely blown out and overexposed and it's been reflected in our histogram this time I'm going to pull the hand down and you can see what's going to happen I'm going to block the sky like that pull it away and I'm just only allowing the sky to get some of the exposure so let's do that shooting now and I'm going to pull the hand down and then I pull it up pull it down again so the key is to keep the hand moving so it doesn't actually get photographed and let's see what the result is like on that one so huge difference ready we'll do the before and after you can see it on the screen there and of course I'm shooting again but if it's a little bit too bright for your liking you can just keep that hand there even longer and it's a bit of a, a balancing act figuring it out now, I'm sure there's people watching this now saying, well, there's something for this problem. It's called a graduated neutral density filter. And what that is, of course, it's an ND, which is dark up the top and then fades down to, you know, 100% opacity. So you can see straight through it. Um, I don't have one of those on me and I've stopped using those for years because modern cameras typically have a good enough dynamic range that we really don't even have this problem much anymore. It's only if you've got an extreme example where you're shooting straight towards the sun and a lot of back, backlit um, objects. Um, but just keep this tip in mind, it's a handy tip, uh, excuse the pun, but for long exposures, I just think it, it can really get you out of trouble and it saves having to get another filter out of the bag. Now, another tip that I haven't mentioned yet, when you're doing a long exposure, it's kind of wise to put on your two second delay. So when you push the shutter, I'm gonna put my two second delay on now. You have two seconds to get your hand away from the camera, then it starts shooting. The whole point is that with the long exposure, because it's obviously operating very slowly, when you push that shutter, there could be a slight vibration as you've made that connection with the camera and you could get a blurry image. Another tip as well, guys, if you have stabilization on your lens, turn that off because if you're doing a long exposure, Every now and then, randomly, the lens, the mechanism in the lens could decide to stabilise and those mechanics moving, it's subtle, but it's enough to blur the image and it's definitely happened to me over the years and you'll be stumped for a minute, but that's what's happening. Um, so turn your stabilisation off if you have the switch on the lens and put the two second delay on. You can do five seconds if you want, but two seconds generally does a job. So now when I push the shutter, pull my hand away and off it goes.
Now most cameras, the longest exposure time you can do is 30 seconds. Not all of them, but most cameras, that's what it is. If you wish to go longer than 30 seconds, you need to switch to something called bulb mode, um, bulb exposure. And in bulb, you're able to shoot and leave that shutter open as long as you like. You'll just need a remote trigger. I just jump on eBay and pick up two, three dollar infrared controls and it's basically push the button to open the shutter, push it to close it, otherwise you can get cable ones as well. So typically you'll be doing that when it gets ultra dark, maybe even astro if you're trying to get the details all in the foreground, or if you want to use one of those 10 stop ND filters that are quite dark, that's where you're going to need the two, three, four, five minute exposure times. And a little tip with that, to know how long you need to expose for when you're using like a 10 stop for example, there's a variety of apps that you can download and pull up and what it does, are basically you put in the settings that you currently have to get the correct exposure and then you say what type of filter you're using, how many stops, and then it will give you the answer for how long your exposure time could be. So you don't have to worry about guesswork too much. But I've got to admit when you're using the 10 stop and you're doing ultra long exposure, you have a lot of play in that histogram, you know, whether it's a, the difference between three minutes and three and a half when it comes to your exposure, is quite minimal. Okay, there we go guys. Long exposure photography. If you haven't tried it before, hopefully you've picked up a few little insights there and you can get out and apply it soon. And the techniques, you know, doing long exposures, it's not just for smoothing out water or clouds, it's even for obviously astrophotography and capturing lightning as well, um, which is something that I've been able to do in the past, which is highly enjoyable. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, any questions, just leave them below and I'll get back to you. Thanks for viewing and I'll see you in the next video.